We are guys, whole shot motorcycles again. Rob's just hooked me up with this Aprilia Tuareg. A couple of you guys have asked for this and I know it's a really popular decision going between the Tuareg and the KTM and the, the Ducati and all that kind of stuff. So um, in today's video, we're gonna take this puppy for a ride. While we're here, I wanted to show you guys. Here you have it, this is my actual Norden that I traded in here. All the mods done to it, still sitting here for sale. 23,990 if anybody's interested. But yeah, this is my actual bike. I miss it actually. I'm gonna ride this uh, probably Monday and do a why I sold it video. Still haven't sold this thing. It's probably a bit worn out. Yeah, <laughs> without further ado, let's get on it. Oh, someone's had this up to 167 already. Here we go, straight into it this time. So this one um, doesn't have a quick shifter either, uh, which is also optional. Uh, we do have cruise control, which is nice, so I can adjust the mirror. Something feels different about this bike. I'm not sure what just yet, but the controls are very familiar because I have my Tuona V4. Is uh, these controls are all pretty much the same on both sides. I know my internet friend Jake who also has a YouTube channel over in America, owns this bike. Uh, I'll link his channel in the description below. The, the, this one's always been a bit of a, a funny one for me because I know it's a, a fantastic bike just from what I've heard. I just don't like how it looks. Uh, that's obviously a, you know, there's objective points and subjective points and that is a completely subjective thing. I think um, a lot of people are going to really love how this bike looks. It's just my personal opinion. I'm not a super fan of uh, mostly the front of it. I just, you know, I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. Neither is the KTM 890. And I mean, I, I prefer the looks of the KTM over this, but neither of them are my cup of tea. And I would still definitely buy them because functionally, they're both amazing. Um, I'll put the specs up on the screen now, we'll do it again later, but uh, you guys can see the specs for yourself. Right, getting onto the motorway here, let's do a bit of a pull. Oh, it sounds really nice. Really nice engine sound. First impressions of the gearbox, um, it, feel, it doesn't feel, it's not as smooth as like the Triumph or the Ducati. It feels a little, not clunky, but like notchy. Um, yeah, it just kind of has uh, a very, you know when it's, when you've shifted gear, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's a very affirmative change. Talking about wind, the wind is kind of starting right at the middle of my visor, pretty much. Uh, not too bad though, I'm not getting a lot of wind, similar feel on the motorway wind-wise to the um, to the Ducati Desert X. Oh man, if you tuck down like that, it's like I'm not even on a motorbike. <laughs> There's no wind. It is quite windy again today, but I'm not getting like blown around or anything. This one does have the more aggressive um, STR rally tires, I think they're called. Get out of this wind. Roll-on power is good. I really enjoy the sound of it. It's very, uh, it has like a very throaty sound. Really, I make really nice sounding twins. Yeah, I like it. So, one of the things that people talk about a lot um, when comparing like this bike versus the Ducati or the KTM or even the, the Husqvarna Norden is the power. This one is, is down on power compared to those by a bit. Um, and you know, I was talking to a bloke yesterday and at Whole Shot that was taking this out for a ride. He took it out for a test ride before me. Um, and that's what he was concerned about. I know he was tossing up between the Ducati and this. Honestly, it doesn't feel that much slower. I don't think you're missing out on a lot of power. And because this bike is a parallel twin, you do have quite a lot of torque. Ergonomics are good. Um, they're different, quite different to most of the other bikes I've ridden in this category. I do feel like the bars are quite close to me. Yeah, I do feel like my hands are, are pretty close to me, which is interesting. But it's comfortable, very comfortable. 
I feel like I'm sitting on like a really nice bar stool. <laughs> I don't know. Very comfortable. The bars don't feel too wide. Um, again, I'm six foot one with a 32 inch inseam. The seat height feels very similar to like the uh, Triumph Tiger 900. Um, at my height, six foot one, 32 inch inseam, I kind of just my heels about that far off the ground, about a centimeter off the ground with both feet. So. Uh, yeah, not too bad. Not too bad for an adventure bike. You can definitely get taller. So yeah, so far the ergonomics are really good. The seat's quite comfortable. Um, it is narrow, but it's very soft. Um, has feels like it has a lot of padding behind it. Mirrors are really good. I didn't get any vibration on the motorway. Really good viewing angle too. Like really great blind spot. Actually, the mirrors are really good. I can hardly see my arms at all in them. Um, and I'm not getting any vibration and yeah very good viewing angle the LCD screen is nice um, it's it looks like a smaller version of the one on my Tuono V4 factory probably the same I would assume as the Tuono 660 screen so very sharp and crisp and and the size is fine I don't think you'd need it any bigger it's kind of a good balance you know the Triumph uh, Tiger one was much much bigger but this one's fine yeah, really nice. So you can change the modes while riding, which is nice. So there's a button, this button here. If you go through an explore mode, urban, off-road, which turns rear ABS off, and individual. Individual mode is, uh, I assume it's the same as user mode on my Aprilia, where you can kind of go in and adjust everything. Nice and smooth in the low rev range. Fueling seems to be excellent. Which is not something I used to with the Prillias. My one I had to kind of tune the fueling so it was uh, better but the on and off throttle is quite smooth. Standing position. Yeah standing position is good. For my height at 6'1 it's very very narrow where your legs are. Very narrow. So you can hug the, the bike quite easily and there's nothing kind of impeding your legs the, the foot pegs are wider as well that's nice um, I would definitely be taking the rubbers out if anything I'd probably roll the bars forward a little bit rear brake feels nice has a good feel to it the rear brake like it bites hard but you can feather it quite easily when you've got ATC up here you can use the cruise control to change it and uh, that does work on the fly as well and you can also if you hold it down it disables traction control and you can do that when you're moving here we go first corner nice stable smooth nice lean in Testing the brakes. Yeah, nice. Brakes are good. Yeah, this has plenty of power to have a lot of fun in. Sure, the other bikes feel better. down this road I think we found another twisty road tester I mean more power would be nice but I'm not missing it it feels good and you've got more power than like a Yamaha T7 and nobody complains about that fun <laughs> oh I know where we are that's quite handy actually I think we've just found our new loop guys okay so 
it definitely does have uh, some kind of wheelie control. Definitely wheelie good. <laughs> uh. oh, this thing's a gym. Okay, so we're going to go to the standard pullover spot, do some low speed testing, have a walk around and then get back on it. I had a little bit of fun, not too much fun, a little bit of fun, too much fun for the camera. Anyway, as we come into the town here, let's talk about urban riding and uh, commuting. Um, I think generally speaking, most adventure bikes are going to be great for commuting. It's just the nature of them, the seating position, um, you know, they generally have a smooth throttle response and um, you know you can carry luggage on them you're upright so you can see over the cars i know i said on my tiger uh, 900 first ride that it's probably one of the best you know like right up the top in terms of commuting bikes as far as the adventure category goes but you know honestly if you're talking about a modern motorcycle it's very hard to find a bad bike these days they all have their different kind of like quirks and stuff i think this would be also an excellent commuter bike if you want to daily ride it i'd probably prefer maybe a little bit more power but i'm a hoon i mean i'm used to the tuono now but realistically it's got heaps i mean you saw on those twisties i was genuinely having a good time very smooth clutch pull on this bike as well oh, i went the wrong way <laughs> i'm not sure if you can change the deceleration on this bike i know you can on my my prelia tuono you can but uh I how it is out of the box is actually quite good do a little viewy here oh man nice and lean <laughs> behave captain no wheelies here we need to wheelie behave <laughs> uh, standing stop no worries i think the gearbox feels similar to my tuono actually like it has that kind of not clunkiness but it's just not quite as smooth as other bikes in this category nothing wrong with it it's just yeah a little bit different so now we've got a new battery let's do some slow speed stuff this thing has a crazy tight turning circle like man full lock very easy to do tight that's probably one of the best in terms of turning circles that I've ever tried. Right, let's do a walk around. This thing has a substantial kickstand. <laughs> it's like solid aluminium, really easy to get your feet behind. This thing's had a proper thrashing off-road, which is good to see, not by me, unfortunately. So here it is, guys, it does look quite tall but it doesn't feel tall when you're on it. So we've got Brembo brakes front and rear, perfect off-road combo of wheels. So you've got 21 inch front, 18 inch rear. Uh, as I said, this one has the Scorpion tires on it, uh, which are all right. I don't think they're great off-road, but um, you know, they handle fine on the road and you know, they're reasonably decent off-road. No quick shifter on this model, but is uh, an optional extra. I think the difference between this bike and some of the other adventure bikes in terms of uh, ergonomics with the bars is this one seems to have a little bit more sweep back which makes you feel like the bars are a little bit closer to you plastic hand guards again just kind of for looks plastic radiator guard but at least it has a radiator guard a lot of bikes don't seem to these days the windscreen seems to do a reasonable job you'd probably want to put an extension on it you do have a usb connection here for power so you're charging your devices and whatnot which is handy yeah i guess really i'm kind of warming up to the bike to the looks of it it doesn't it's not really ugly i just am not a fan of of that kind of scooped look on the front with that headlight it feels like something is not quite finished on the front it does have cool daylight running lamps there we go yeah i guess it's just not really my cup of tea but it's not yeah i mean it's really irrelevant what i think of the looks because you know each of you guys is going to decide for yourselves whether you like the look of it i do like the kind of desert racer stance it has similar to like the yamaha t7 and the seat's nice how it's flat so you can just like eat real easily sweep back um, and it is quite narrow between your feet and smooth so nothing gets in your way when you're like clamping it down with your knees led indicators the rear pegs are quite low which is interesting like they're quite close to the front pegs sitting on the back 
Yeah, I reckon you could sit on this for quite a while as a pillion rider, pillion passenger. Yeah, nice wide foot pegs, just take those rubbers out, which you can do, there's a little bolt on the bottom. Fully adjustable suspension, um, and the suspension is really nice. I think it's about perfect in terms of like firmness, you know, compliance, it leans really well on the roads. Yeah, I think the suspension and the chassis on this bike is really the standout. It, it feels very, like it handles very well. It only has that 660 motor only, but I mean, it's plenty of power. Like I said, it's a less capacity than a T7 and has, still has a fair bit more power. Really like the wheels. I don't know why I think this is like a BMW thing. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, I first saw this on BMWs. 90% sure I'm wrong, but I do like that outside spoke look. Let's do an exhaust sound. See how the stock exhaust sounds. Let's get out of here and do some final thoughts. I need to find a uh, off-road spot that's at least a gravel road that's a little bit uh, closer to the dealer. So summing up this first ride, it surprised me. It's a really, really nice bike. It's better than I thought it would be. Mind you, I've only heard good things about it. So I guess I just had my own sort of bias on the way it looks and you know the, the lack of power, but uh, after riding it, I'm really not concerned with that. I mean, the looks are still a thing that's uh, subjective, like I said, but um, I don't think the lower power numbers on this bike is anything to be concerned about. I think, uh, I think it has plenty of power, certainly more than enough power to go off-road and plenty of power to have fun on the street. If you want more power, sure, maybe look at the Desert X or um, the KTM but you're not missing out on a whole lot really. It is a noticeable difference, but it's not massive. Going on to the motorway again for the final time. Love that lean in. So we'll get off the motorway so you guys can hear me properly and uh, chat about some final thoughts. I think that's the takeaway from this first ride is that uh, you know my final thoughts I think the Tuareg is a very well balanced very well you know very good handling motorcycle with just enough power to have heaps of fun and uh, you know it would be excellent off-road so that pretty much sums it up guys back here at Holshot all the riders are out today it's good to see we are going on uh, We've got something a little bit different for you guys tomorrow, so watch out for that video. Nice. There it is guys, Prillia Tuareg, really impressed. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.